Okay, today what we're talking about is how to size injectors and fuel pumps to, to whatever it is that you're working on. Uh, this is something that I've been covering quite a bit in private groups, so I just wanted to make sure that, you know, there's a video to help everybody out uh, that they could just refer to, okay? So first things first, we're going to talk about how to um, read these graphs, okay? So I'm, I'm just using the AEM as an example. What I'm teaching you guys today is going to relate to pretty much all of them. Um, but the AEM is just one that a lot of people have come up uh, and said, hey, the, is this good enough for my system? So it's just the one that I'm using. So you've got three things on your graph. Okay, you've got liters per hour fuel pressure, and current in amps, okay? One thing you need to be aware of is that um, current, of, current in amps does not correlate with liters per hour in any way, shape, or form, okay? Um, they only refer to the fuel pressure in order to read them, okay? So it's not like some crazy weird 3D graph. There'd actually be a z-axis if they did relate to each other. But there isn't, so we don't need to worry about that. Okay, so first off, we're going to start with liters per hour versus fuel pressure and how to read that, okay? Um, when you start out looking at a graph, you need to make sure of one simple thing. You'll see the 40 down here, and you'll see the 330 up here. Some charts actually base everything off of a zero instead of an initial PSI. So you need to be very mindful of that um, when you're looking at or sizing a pump because it may be 330 liters per hour, but it's actually 330 liters per hour at, you know, no restriction. So you just need to be aware of that, okay? And we're going to make a little line here. And we're going to put 55, and we're going to put a little line here, and we're going to put 83.5, okay? Now, the reason for those is 55 PSI is the, uh, what we're going to, ju we're just going to label it as um, nominal pressure, okay? Um, that is the, the standard pressure of a 2010 to 2012. 83.5, whether you are a GDI or 3.8 or a 2.0T, is 83.5. They just up the rail pressure, okay? That's kind of to compensate for something else, but maybe it'll make sense to you guys when we start talking about injectors. But for now, it's 55 PSI. That's what you need to be worried about. So we're actually going to draw a little orange line. Okay. And that is important to us because that is what we're actually going to be basing everything off of. So... Let's put a dot there and a dot there, okay? Now, this uh, the 83 actually goes, you know, off the, the charts there, so we, we're not going to worry about that. It does apply, and if a pump goes past 80 on its chart, you'll be able to get the proper information for that. Uh, but a good guesstimate for this AEM pump is that it is at 240. Uh, which means it's not super high flowing at that pressure. Um, so, but we're just going to focus on the 55 because it's kind of in the middle of the graph and it's easier to read. So what does this mean for us? Okay, let's make a new blue line. And we're going to make, just to save ourselves some hassle later on, we're going to make a new red line. Okay. So that, oh, I accidentally made that one crap. Okay, uh, what that means is that at that pressure, we have, let's focus on the blue line for now. At that pressure, we have um, between 290 and 300 uh, liters per hour. Okay, so let's... We're going to start working on some formulas here in order to figure out what we need. So let's just 
right, 300 and, oh, actually that's it's 200, it's less than. It's 200 and, let's say 95 to err on the side of caution, okay? So that's what we know we have to work with, okay? So it's no longer a 300, for our application, it's no longer a 330 liter pump. It is a um, 295 liter pump, okay? Uh, so that's already a dead giveaway that, you know, we're not working in the same realm of what it's been advertised as anymore because that's not what we're running at. Then, let's, uh, because a lot more 3.8 guys than 2.0T guys come after me for this actually right now, uh, let's focus on uh, the V6s. So there's actually a formula in order to figure out the max injector size for a um, liter per hour pump size, okay? And that formula is I'm actually going to just write it out and then I will explain it. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're actually doing a couple of different conversions in order to bring us down to a specific size. Injectors are all rated in CCM, cubic centimeters uh, per minute, okay? But our fuel pump is already running at liters per hour, so we need to convert hours into minutes, okay? And then we need to know how many injectors can we run. So what we'll just kind of start off with is we got 295, the number that we took from over here, and 295, divide by however many injectors you have. Okay, so in the terms of the V6, we've got six injectors. And then we divide hours by minutes in order to determine, or to, to make it into per minute, okay? So this divide by 60. Then we need to convert liters into cc's, which is uh, you multiply it by a thousand because there's a thousand cc's per um, per liter. Okay, so let's do some quick math here, and that gives us 819 ccm. Okay. So we know that we can run an 819 ccm uh, injector, and it will, now this is at 100% DC, okay? Now DC stands for duty cycle. It is how often the injector is open. So at 100% DC, it is open 100% of the time, so it is never actually shutting, um, or at least it's not supposed to. So it will flow 860, or 819 cc's in that given time, okay? But can we actually flow, like, is that actually the correct size that we're looking for? And the actual answer is no. Like, you can't run an 819cc inject, or, uh, well, actually the nearest size would be an 800cc, right? But injectors have their own nominal size. Okay, they um, need to be converted from their nominal size to a usable size, okay? And that's actually very, very simple to do. Well, we need to make their nominal size our nominal size. And that's actually really easy to do. And for those who are familiar with fractions, yes, I have just turned it into a percentage, okay? Um, or I've used a percentage. The one in this equation maintains the body, and then the 12 gives us our value over the original, okay? So, yeah, this is a math lesson, but it's a math lesson that could help or break your vehicle okay so we already so we've got here 800 uh, 896 ccm okay but our pump will only flow 819 ccm okay uh, well 
since this number here is bigger than this number here, we know that we can't run that size of pump. So this AEM pump isn't actually going to work for an 800cc injector. Uh, so how do we figure out, well, what exact size of pump do we need? At what point do we need to have the correct amount of fuel flow? Well, we've got a couple of different options. We can A, drop the fuel rail pressure, which in a naturally aspirated engine is actually a complete plausibility and is very, you know, easy to do. In a boosted engine, however, that you don't really want to go that route because you run into a couple of other things. That's what Hyundai decided to do with their 83.5. They were running more boost, they wanted more flow out of the injector, so they, in order to compensate for all the different variables in their tune and to not have to run a, re a return system, they just simply massively increased the fuel rail pressure. So we have to figure this part out. Okay, well, if we have an equation to figure out how big of an injector we can run, then we have to have an equation, a reverse, an inverse e equation, in order to figure out um, how much pump we need to do what we're going to do, okay? Which is also, we're coming into this. So we have, we've done our correction factor. So we know that we need an 896 e, cc injector. So we just create our, our our next formula, which is 896, but this time we're timesing it, okay, by six. Um, for those who are not aware of the dot, uh, it's what you do when you're doing a multiplication. I guess we could also do bracket six, double brackets, but the dot is just to get rid of the, um, the X because whenever you're working in a situation that could have variables and you're running on the variables, so we just don't use X. Okay, so we're timesing it by six, and then we have to do it again, though. But we need to times the body, okay? So I actually did that wrong. And for those who are used to working in Excel sheets, this actually makes sense to you guys. And then divide by 1,000, okay? So let's do let's do this math and I'll go over it with you guys. So we've got 896 times 6 equals uh, 5,376. Ignore that number. You just need it to be in the calculator. Then we're going to times it again by 6, or by actually by 60, because we're converting minutes into hours. We end up with 322,560, and then you're going to divide that by 1,000 equals 322.56. So if this pump had been rated at 330 um, liters per hour at 55 PSI, it would be an awesome pump, okay? But it's not. So we obviously know that the AEM pump is not going to be able to handle our injectors so we need to look for a different pump. Some people might say, well, what about, is there a correction factor to kind of get us in the ballpark of where the 322 at 55 PSI would be? And the answer to that is uh, actually no, because as you can see, this is not a linear graph, okay? So we have one leg of the graph here, and then we have another leg of the graph here, okay? So at this point, the flow rate changes, okay? It actually, the pump becomes less efficient, and that's what causes the, the, the shift in the linear aspect of it. So because of that, that efficiency drop right there, we, we know that there is no actual formula because we don't know the point at when it becomes inefficient. So mark these equations down. Um, Keep them in your book, do whatever you're going to do with them, because they, you know, put them in an, exp in a, in a spreadsheet, um, because they're going to be able to help you do all of this by yourself, and much, much easier. 
So for the purposes of this discussion, I'm actually going to write some numbers down here. So 55 PSI, we know this pump isn't going to do us the next job. So more than likely, we're going to be looking at like a 400 or a 380 liter pump, somewhere around there. Uh, again, it all comes into that efficiency zone, and we just kind of have to guess where it's going to be, but always confirm with a proper graph what exactly you're going to be you're you're going to be looking at. Make these lines on the graph. You know, these are bridge lines. They help you see your situation a lot better and in my in my experience they they help a lot more okay so the next thing we're going to talk about actually because we're done with liters per hour we we now know that you know if we were looking at 800 cc injectors this isn't going to do it um, but if we were say looking at like a 750 cc injector this pump is probably just fine leave yourself that rating of a hundred percent duty cycle okay leave yourself this rating because failure to leave yourself that rating even though nobody pretty much nobody tunes for 100 percent dc you do have um, losses that will occur as the pump ages you'll have losses that occur as the injectors age your like as the resistance of the injector coil goes up it's gonna change things on you so you want to kind of size oversize your pump I guess you could say uh, for the situation so if you're if you're looking at a 322 LPH for 55 PSI you might want to consider even going a little bit higher than that so say if you had a 400 LPH pump and it turned out that it was rated at 350 LPH at 55 right then that's pretty much going to be a perfect pump for you because it's going to give you a little bit more wiggle room never worry about this being too high well there is a ridiculous zone right but if this is high um, you're just going to have like more room to work with as things age you're not going to have more fuel because you're still going to be limited by the injector size okay the injectors are ultimately what's going to decide your fuel, okay? And this is what I was talking about a little bit earlier about injectors requiring more fuel based on their fuel rating, and that's where that correction factor comes in. Is that is converting a, an, a, an injector's nominal? Actually, let's just do this. You're converting an injector's nominal because in most injectors, and you're going to have to verify this again, are rated at 45.3 or 43.5. I think it's a typo on a lot of people's websites that caused this discrepancy, but a lot of people will rate them and just, they'll just say 45, okay, PSI. So we need to convert, that's where that correction factor comes into place. We're converting 45 to 55 okay and that correction factor is 12 percent okay so if you're looking for what the body of the like if you're kind of doing this in reverse you know you've got 320 liters per hour at 55 what is it at like what does that come up to for an injector size that gives us a let's just say 890 cc now we want to do it in reverse well earlier we were doing 800 times 1.12 well we're just doing the inverse of the percentage okay so we're doing 12 points in the negative and that actually just becomes 800 divided by 0 0.88. So we've just gone reverse. And that will, you know, figure it out. But let's just do 890 here. 
to figure out how big of an injector minimum we need. And that's going to give us a 783 cc injector. Now the only time you'd actually be sizing your injectors this way, like figuring out your injectors this way, is actually if you already had a specific BMEP and you needed to know uh, how much fuel is required in order to solve for that at a target AFR and there's a bunch of other math, okay? So just don't worry about that, but that knowledge is good to have as you get more technical into doing this kind of stuff. So. The next thing we need to look at is current in amps. Why is current in amps important? Well, it's because in a previous video that I did, there's actually in the how-to section on the, on, the, on the YouTube, is how to install an aftermarket relay for um, battery um, directing direct feed to the uh, pump, okay? And we need to know why that, like, what this rating is in order to help with that. So there is no actual magical formula or anything like that uh, quite yet, but you need to know one thing. If you have a 13 amp draw, okay, and that's like 13.2 or whatever, right? But let's just say 13. Uh, if you got a 13 amp draw, does that mean you, you use a 15 amp fuse? No. Absolutely not. Okay, um, and there there's reasons for that. Okay, and I'm going to get into that. You have the reason then for that is you're going to have different size wires. Okay, now that's obviously not the scale, but it's to show importance here. So how, whatever your distance is uh, is going to denote the gauge of wire that you can run. Okay. So let's say that this is a 4 GA and this is a 1 GA that that's going to denote how many amps over D or distance okay um, so let's just this is not accurate okay but let's just say that this is 40 amps and this is 80 amps okay you've got a 13 amp fuse or a 13 amp draw. So you can probably safely use this gauge of wire. Okay, so we need to not even worry about this one anymore. Okay. The the reason we don't use a 15 amp fuse, okay, so we know we know that the fuse that this fuse would be safe on this line, right? We know that it would be safe for here. But we need to be aware of something else called V-drop. Okay. V-drop is voltage drop. is pretty straightforward. This amp rating, okay, will be at a very specific voltage. Okay, so that's 13 amps at what V? Okay. Let's just, because AEM chose not to include that information, they've decided to put average amps instead of actual amps like like amps by themselves actually mean nothing to us because we have two primary voltages in a car we've got 12 volts and we've got 13.5 roughly volts okay this is vehicle off this is vehicle on okay so as you're when your vehicle is not running, so otherwise your alternator is not providing power, you're actually going to be drawing more current to run that pump. Okay, so they're saying that's your average V, or your average amp, sorry. So that actually means absolutely nothing to us, because 12 volts at 13 amps is actually a bit different than 13.5. And this is why we say to do that relay mod, okay? Um, because I'm actually going to draw some lines here for you guys. Let's pretend for the purposes of this that 
the red line is 13.5 and the purple line is 12 okay so look at this see see how much higher that line is we've got a similar situation here so let's draw another purple line here this isn't a very extreme case of this scenario but there are actually worse cases. So 13 amp, 13.2 to a 13.6, okay? Now you guys might be thinking that's not that much, but as you get into more high performance pumps, it actually will be the difference of a 20 amp fuse or a 25 amp fuse, okay? The fuse is not there to do anything except limit how much the pump is allowed to draw and the reason for that like a lot of people will say but i thought it was to help protect the wire in the event that the wire shorts out or what it grounds out neutrals whatever you want to call it and that is true to a certain extent that's why everybody says put your fuse you know 12 inches between, you know, your device and the power source, okay? Um, we're going to, you know, you're going to continue to do that. You're going to just keep, you know, that train of thought. But this fuse here, say we put in a 15 amp fuse, Okay, you're going to get V-drop. All this distance is going to cause V-drop. Okay? Which means that the load on this wire, so this is 13, the load on this wire could go past the potential of the fuse, and thus it pops. And that's going to be a constant problem. So we need to give ourselves a little bit more headroom and, say, put a 20 amp fuse in. Okay? And somebody says, well, what happens if the wire breaks here? It's going to do whatever. No matter where in the wire it breaks, it could break a thousand places. As long as it breaks on this side of the fuse, no matter what rating that fuse has, it's going to pop. It's just that it's, well, it's, uh, I shouldn't say that. One of two things will happen you will blow your poor little battery apart okay or you will uh, pop the fuse so that's basically what it's going to come down to say your battery has a 330 amp rating it'll try to dump all 30 amps through that wire all the time um, and then the object is what actually you know runs whatever it's going to be running it's only going to actually use 13 of it but so kind of it's complicated but if you break the wire here it's going to try and push all 330 amps into that spot as soon as this spot starts drawing 15 amps that fuse is going to pop or 20 amps that fuse is going to pop um and that's just the way that they work. So they only protect, it's not so much to protect the device, or it's not so much to create a limitation for um, the wire, it's a limitation of the device. It's, I'm kind of explaining this horribly, but that's what you need to be aware of is V-drop and how it's going to affect your device, okay? And you need to size your fuses. Say we were running at 80 PSI, okay? And we had 15 here, and we were only focusing on this one. Some people would say, hey, uh, that's only 14.7 amps. That is smaller than a 15 amp fuse. So therefore, I'm going to use a 15 amp fuse. Well, that would be wrong, because we're focusing on 13.5 volts, okay? So that's 14.7 amps at 13.5. But when the car is off, when we start the car, and it draws, you know, past that point, past that 15 amp point, 
you know, it's going to draw 15 uh, 0.2 amps, but we've only stuck a 15 we've only stuck a 15 amp fuse, so it's going to it's going to pop. So that's why we need to be aware of these kinds of things. That's why we need to know the voltage and the wire size again, how it comes into effect. This wire, you know, can this wire handle 15 amps? Well, sure, but over what distance, okay? Uh, can this wire handle 15 amps? Yeah, it can at this specif specified distance. It, it all depends. You need to be aware of that's why if the company does not ship a pump with a current in amps and hopefully do a better job and specify the voltage like AEM doesn't apparently, then you know, you need to get that information. It's just critical information to doing this and wiring things up so you're not constantly popping fuses, we're set, burning up wires, etc, etc. So I hope this helps some of you guys out. Um, it's kind of a long explanation, but uh, I think it's one of the critical things people need to be aware of when they start building their car and sizing everything correctly. So uh, if you guys have any more videos like this that you guys like to see, let me know. I do plan on doing one on how exactly to read a flow chart on a turbocharger and how that affects your engine and sizing your turbo, quote unquote, correctly for your application. So, uh, again, hope this helps some of you guys, and uh, we will talk to you guys next time.